um, it's, it's a very important topic and it's sort of starting to gain more traction in the neurology community. It's not something new. It's been around for a long time. Um, from initial descriptions of sensory ganglionopathy in patients with cancer who showed staining patterns on um, guinea pig brains. That was back in 1965 to discovery of myasthenia gravis antibodies to, and Lambert eaten antibodies in 1980s and 1990s. Um, the, the field has been around, but um, the expansion of the field to involve certain less known autoimmune disorders or less categorized autoimmune disorders has been the exciting thing in the last decade or so. Um, in this particular session of autoimmune neurology, uh, we had focused on peripheral nervous system disorders and subcategorized them into uh, neuropathies, autonomic dysfunction, muscle disorders, and briefly touching on neuromuscular junction disorders. Uh, so we had three different speakers. I was talking about peripheral neuropathies. I had invited Dr. Mupidi from Stanford to talk about dysautonomia conditions, and Dr. Amato from uh, Harvard Medical School was going, was touching on uh, talking about the myopathies or autoimmune muscle disorder conditions. Uh, one of the main factors we want to kind of highlight, or it's actually a few of the main things we want to highlight in this session, one was uh, growing recognition of utility of autoantibodies in management and diagnosis of these conditions. They not only help us diagnose these conditions early, some of the antibodies such as Neurofashion 155 by GG4 also provide us helpful information about what is the best treatment option. The second thing we wanted to briefly touch on was complications secondary to immune checkpoint inhibitors. These are cancer immunotherapies which are being utilized for more and more cancers now. Um, and then about one to three percent of patients who develop who get these medications that can develop autoimmune side effects, and the autoimmune side effects affecting the peripheral nervous system, nerve muscle, tends to be three times higher in frequency compared to those autoimmune side effects affecting the central nervous system. So that's the other point we want to convey. And then lastly, we want to briefly touch on uh, post COVID nineteen complications, especially if there's concern for autoimmunity, because that's a common question we're facing in clinic nearly every week.